We titled today, Standing on the Edge of Tomorrow, and by the end of the day, hopefully you can, you can see why we named it that, but we really feel like the industry is at a crossroads of sorts. Um, you know, the, the day has finally arrived, you know, finally, that we knew would come, that a lot of you knew would come, where data was thought of as, as first in this. You know, we've been taking the back seat to GPS auto steering and, and so on for a long time, and um, but now there is a, a realization that if we are going to significantly increase production, we're going to have to do it through better agronomic decision making and, and we need to manage and utilize data to get that done. Uh, SST was founded 21 years ago, 1994, by my father David Waits and some partners. Um, my dad was a farmer in, in Kansas in the 70s and early 80s when everything went to hell in a handbasket in the early 80s. Uh, he went back to college, learned about GIS and remote sensing, saw the application for agriculture, and set down a new, uh, new path in life and, and a new career that uh, resulted in founding SST in, in 1994. Started with three people. You know, this was very early. I mean, this was before the GPS constellation was fully operational. It was before Windows. Um, so extremely early. But they could see that Windows was coming. Esri was building um, ArcView, a GIS for a Windows computer. And there was a belief that agronomists and farmers were going to manage geospatial data on, you know, their personal computer. And, and SST wanted to be a part of that. So, um, we were ESRI's first business partner in the ag space. We took their ArcView product, we customized it for agriculture, and released that product in 96, and, um, and had a lot of success with it. We grew quickly, things were going well, but we also saw the limitations of it. All right? we, we could tell that the market was saturating. We could tell that, you know, as we really, um, when we thought about, large ag retail type organizations or crop consulting firms, when you scaled that up, it didn't make a whole lot of sense to have every individual running a, a desktop GIS product, all the agronomists putting out different products to the farmers, doing things in different ways, unable to communicate efficiently with one another and so on. And that, <clears throat> these dots kind of represent what that looks like. You know, a whole bunch of isolated standalone computers out there. So in, in the, um, Late 90s, 98, 99, we took a step in our evolution and we moved to this kind of a model, which was the SST Information Labs. We put regional, we sold software tools to companies that put in regional data processing centers. And the idea was that, hey, let's get some economies of scale within these organizations. Let's, let's you know, a, a company like Helena Chemical Company, for example, put one in in Indiana and all the locations up there in that area would send data in, have it processed by uh, you know, a dedicated staff and return. And we put about 20 of these labs around the country. And a lot of these people are, are still with us today. There are several in the room. Helena's one of them, uh, CropQuest, um, Precision Agronomics, MFA, um, and, and several others that had these information labs. And, and we learned a lot through this, right? We, this is really, you know, this is 99, we're pushing this data into these central hubs, and part of the value was that we were gonna be able to aggregate data and do something with larger sets of data. But we got tripped up on the lack of standardization in the data. I mean, everybody collected data differently, we were spending all the time just wrangling data, right? Having a hard time building tools that were efficient because of that and so on, and, um, and recognize there wasn't any record keeping software to, to collect, you know, just kind of whole field records and things about, you know, what was planted, what was sprayed. So we set about building some data collection tools. We built a product called Fieldbook that let each one of these standardize the way they collected data. Um, but it, it really wasn't working as well as it should have and could have, and so we evolved to another step. So you know, it took a few years, but by 2006, we really had moved to this new system, which is um, where we are today in that all of our, 
customers have a standardized interface to collect data into. The data comes in to SST centrally, and it's at SST that we do the data processing piece. What we, we took from those labs was um, that there was a lot of value in standardization, but it, we didn't need every one of those 20 companies doing something differently. So we took on the role to standardize what a planting operation looked like and what a tillage operation looked like and so on. And then we provided reference data for those operations. So a pick list of crops and seed companies and weeds and diseases and all these things. And we've had staff working on that um, ever since the, the late 90s. And we put out a, a new set of products called Summit, which is our flagship desktop uh, GIS today and a companion called Stratus that forced conformity and standardization to our customer base. So all customers today using our system, whether they're in Brazil or Australia or you know, Iowa or Florida or whatever, all collect data on, on, in a common way. All the data synchronizes to this central uh, system and it's here that we provide data processing um, products. I'll, I'll, I'll stop that there for a second. So, um, today, we've, we've built a new headquarters in Stillwater. We're, we've got a new 18,000 square foot facility. Um, we've grown substantially over the last few years. I mean, we've doubled in size since 2011. We've got over 80 employees today. And the thing I'm the most proud about is that you know, over 30% of those people have been with us for more than 10 years, which is really remarkable, especially when you consider you know, half of them weren't there five years ago. Um, but this is really what differentiates SST from our competitors. It is that longevity uh, of employees. I mean, it's the longevity of management. We're the same people that, that were, were there from the start. Um, we've held our staff together. We've built deep intellectual property in this space. And that is, you know, we, we've got, I mean, through that, we've built up tremendous know-how about all the nuances of what it takes to manage geospatial data in agriculture. We've also now got seven locations. So in addition to Stillwater, we've got an office in Champaign, Illinois, where we've got, we've got four people in Illinois now. Uh, we've got two people in Iowa. Um, we've got an office in Australia, in Brisbane, where we've got a couple people, and then in uh, Sao Paulo, Brazil, where we've got three. And those are all sales and support offices, and then in um, Oklahoma, we've also added offices in Oklahoma City and Tulsa just as a way to be able to ramp up staffing faster so we don't have to talk to everybody to move into a 50,000 person town of Stillwater. This is our customer footprint. Um, so looking at North America first, you know, which, which is of course the, the core to our business, I mean 95% of our business is in um, the US and Canada. We are now over 110 million acres in the system that represents data on over 160,000 farmers. And on the right side is just zoomed into the Midwest. That's kind of hard to see, but I'm sure you guys know it uh, well enough to, to be able to decipher where the state lines are. Here's what we're looking like in the international market. So in, I think, 2010 was when we started in Australia, and then 2000, I don't know what, 12, I think, in uh, Brazil. And this is a big effort for us to go internationally because of the standardization. I mean, we've, because we're so standardized, when we go into these markets, we have to have every chemical, every seed, every weed and insect all on the system, right? And available for them to pick from. And we are also standardizing this globally so that when you're picking a weed in Australia and calling it some funny Australian name, it's linked to the, sci the same scientific name that is uh, being used in, in the US, right, or in Brazil. So as we expand internationally, we're building out our data standards and reference data to be one global system so that, you know, somebody can, some multinational at some point can be getting reports in their native language, but the data around the world is collected in, in many languages and uh, conforming to different cultural practices and so on.